So look what came in the mail today. Liquefied RV toilet treatment. That guy looks familiar. So my buddy Matt over at Matt's RV Reviews sent me their new product. This is their uh, new toilet treatment. So this is for your black tank, and this is going to give you the ability to add a pre-measured amount of this stuff to your black tank and help it dissolve and break down all the sludge and junk inside of there. It says shake vigorously before using. Loosen the cap from the dispensing chamber. Gently squeeze the bottle to fill the measuring chamber with the required amount of liquid. So it is one ounce per 40 gallons of tank capacity. So yeah, this should last a while. Then you're going to fill your toilet and flush so you get some water mixed into this. This thing must be super, super concentrated. One ounce per 40 gallons. It's crazy. Prevents odors, breaks down waste, easy dumping, 100% biodegradable, and made in the U.S. All from my buddy Matt over at Matt's RV Reviews. Super, super cool YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, definitely uh, subscribe to his channel because he does some absolutely amazing RV reviews. Let's go ahead and pour it in. Gonna go ahead and fill up the toilet. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description if this is something you may want to try. But again, it's going to take a, a couple trips for me to really give you an evaluation on what I think of the stuff. But Matt's got a pretty good reputation and he wouldn't put his picture on anything unless it did what it said it was going to do. What's going on, guys? So today we are out here taking a look at the Brookstone. This is a pretty massive fifth wheel. It's about 42 feet long, super tall, wide body, full profile unit. We're going to come around to the back and we're going to talk about something that I get questioned about quite often because I make a lot of videos about this topic whenever I'm doing reviews. All right, so I'm going to try to make this video as, I guess, simple to understand as possible because there's a lot of complexity that can go into this. Looks like I'm missing one of my caps right there. But we removed the two inch receiver that was on the back of the fifth wheel. It came on the back of the fifth wheel. And we actually increased the length and we did some work with the bumper here to be able to support this really cool Lippert rack that folds down on the back to give us the ability to carry things back here. And this thing has like a 300 pound capacity, which is awesome. But almost every time I walk around the back of an RV and I see a receiver on the back, I'll usually make one or two comments. One, it's designed for a tow rack or an accessory hitch, or two, it's designed to tow, but then I follow that up with, but you should never tow with it. Or at least I don't recommend using it to tow a trailer. And let me explain why. First of all, if you look at the capacities of the hitch themselves, the hitch itself is gonna have like a 300 pound tongue weight capacity and a 3000 pound towing capacity. So. If it's back there and you have a four-way connector for your lights, why don't I recommend using it to tow behind your fifth wheel or whatever type of trailer you have? Well, let me explain why. So there are a lot of folks who do tow a trailer behind their fifth wheel. And the term for it's actually called double towing. So basically you have your tow vehicle up here, you have your fifth wheel, and then you'll have a small utility trailer, cargo trailer, just something to be able to carry perhaps your side-by-side, -side, your quad, your golf cart, something like that behind the back. And in most cases, you can get those trailers so they only weigh 1,500 pounds or less. And you know, you throw a thousand pound quad on top of it, you have 2,500 pounds worth of weight back here, and you can probably get everything balanced out so you're only putting 250 pounds worth of hitch on the receiver. So why is that generally not a good idea? Well, the reason why is because of this right here. What am I pointing at? I'm pointing at the frame of your RV, but the part a lot of people don't often understand is this part right here, which is the sidewall of your RV, as well as the roof of your RV. Now, why does all of this matter if you're gonna have a lever arm on the back of your RV that's pushing down, pulling, pushing with all sorts of different types of energies and forces, especially dynamic energy when you're moving and the things bouncing around and, and you know going over bumps and things like that? Why is that a bad idea? The main reason why is if I strip all the walls 
the roof, basically the, the box structure off of our RV and pull it down just to the frame. And I pull that frame just across the yard with the truck. You would see it doing this number. The frame would be flexing and bending and, and contorting. It would be moving. And it's designed to do that. It's actually designed to have flex into it. Almost any frame you look at will do that. Even a semi-tractor, you know, flatbed frame or even a, a box truck, you'll see that there is some movement designed to, to be introduced into that component whenever you're towing. And the reason for that is, is if things are too rigid, they can crack, they can fail. So, especially over roads, when you're hitting bumps, speed bumps, potholes, things like that. So you want things to be able to move and flex a little bit. Same goes for RVs. Now, when you're talking about an RV where the focus is primarily about being lightweight, as light as possible, not so much because they can't build them heavier, but mainly because once something like this gets too heavy, you can't tow it. You don't have the right vehicle or it limits the type of vehicle you could actually tow something like this with. So there's a focus on being lightweight. The frames themselves have a lot of flex in them when it's just the frame. You throw the sidewalls on, the roof, all of the structure around it, that's where it makes the frame and everything rigid. It kind of solidifies the whole structure so the structure is much, much more rigid, less likely to flex. There's still gonna be some flex, but it's less likely to flex. Now keep in mind, the sidewalls of your RVs are generally gonna be either wood with a aluminum, sheathing on the outside or it's going to be aluminum with a fiberglass sheathing on the outside. And why is that important? Because your sidewalls, though they are structural in the sense that they are making the entire unit more rigid, they're not structural in the sense that they're designed to be able to handle the weight of your I-beam, the main frame that supports this entire structure. So when you have this weight on the back that's pressing down, moving, pulling up and you know pushing and pulling against your RV, Whenever that lever arm, whenever that leverage is being applied, it is causing your frame to slightly bend like this. It's doing this little bending effect, even if it's very subtle. Now, if you can imagine that a frame is relatively flexible, but the box itself is what creates that rigid structure, what happens to all your openings, all your cutouts, all your windows, these holes in this structure, whenever you start introducing flex? Whenever that flex starts hitting the frame, it's going to transfer to the weakest section of your RV. It could be the front overhang. It could be an area underneath a window. It could be an area above or around a slide. It could be all sorts of different areas that are now going to be pulling apart, expanding, contracting, flexing, bending, deflecting. And that's where you can get frame failure, but not just frame failure. You can get structural failure. If you double toe and you have a vehicle back here or whatever you're carrying. Imagine that weight. Look how much overhang there is back here. There's probably 12 feet of overhang behind the rear axle. And you're putting this leverage that's constantly pressing down, pulling up, pushing and pulling against this structure. It's flexing. Whether you believe it or not, whether you think your RV is super strong or not, there is some area of your RV that is flexing. And the weakest part of your structure is going to be the sidewall. And once that sidewall starts to separate, you're going to notice cracks forming. And that is the reason why I don't recommend a double toe behind a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. These structures aren't built like a semi dry van structure or a trailer that you might use for commercial or industrial applications. These are built to be lightweight, towable by class three or below vehicles. And because of that, that focus on being lightweight, you do run the risk that having that leverage back there could cause some type of a structural failure throughout the main body of the RV. It may not be the frame itself. The frame may be perfectly fine. The frame may flex the whole time you're doing it. It may absorb that energy and you may be perfectly fine from a frame perspective. But this huge opening right here, if you notice from the sidewall, it's all open and hollow underneath this one little continuous part that runs across the top. So you may develop a crack up there. You may develop a crack above this slide. You may develop a crack above a door, an opening, simply because that flex, when it goes through, where do you think it's transferring to? It's transferring to your sidewall. It's transferring to the rigid components that are holding your RV together as a boxed unit. The frame itself can deflect a little bit. It's designed to because once you build these structures, it has to deflect a little bit. What ends up happening, though, is any of those areas that become a weak point because they're expanding and contracting could eventually crack. And it may not crack under normal driving conditions, just driving down a beautifully paved interstate or highway, but it may end up 
creating that stress crack. It may end up causing that failure whenever you hit that off beaten path that one time that you want to take the, the trailer out to the desert or you want to take it out through the mountains and you take that one path that, that you're going to be hitting some really, really awkward bumps and angles. And, and the RV is already flexing and contorting and moving, but now you have a trailer behind it which is applying an additional 250 pounds worth of leverage off of the back bumper. Uh, just imagine what type of leverage and energy that's transferring into the sidewall of your RV by way of the frame itself. So again, the frame's not the failure point. That's not the point that I ever really worry about as being the failing part of an RV whenever you're towing. It's all the components that are attached to the frame that have to remain rigid, that are now being forced to flex and contort in ways that they weren't designed. So even if you have a tow rating, on your RV, I generally say don't use it to tow. Throw an accessory rack back there, something like that. If you need an RV specifically designed to carry toys with you, get a toy hauler. But I don't recommend hauling toys behind a fifth wheel. And I think my friends over at Matt's RV Reviews would probably agree. Probably almost any of the YouTube channels that focus on safety as well as towability of RVs would agree with this. But that's the reason why. And I wanted to answer that question because it's one that definitely comes up during almost every RV review I do. Whenever I get to the back, we see a receiver and we see that little four-way connector there. And I'm like, okay, so obviously it's designed to have trailer lights connected to it. And you know, this receiver is rated for 300 pound hitch capacity, 3000 pounds worth of towing capacity, but I don't recommend towing behind your RV. I hope this clears that up. I hope this gives you the answer that you've been looking for because yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised I haven't addressed it in more detail. I know I did it on a video where I was talking to a Lippert technician that came out and we kind of went over it briefly, but at the same time, just think about the leverage, think about the energy whenever you're hanging additional weight back here, especially something that is not static weight, it's dynamic weight, it can move up and down, it has its own flexibility, it creates its own hinge point back there. Imagine what that can do to your entire boxed structure when this now has to be able to handle that additional leverage and be able to move to be able to support that energy. That's where failure points end up happening and that's why a lot of people I think have problems with RVs because they're not understanding where energy goes whenever you're towing. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, take a moment, please, and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.